Hi, how you doing? I am Seth. I'm Will. And we're here with Air Theater Designs to talk about Sonos and how to fix issues. So we did a, a video a little while ago and there were three things to fix Sonos. And this is something that we find re works really well with our clients. We've got probably a little over a thousand Sonos systems out there. Yeah, at least. And uh, Will did the video and I thought it was a great video, but uh, man, the public hated it. <laughs> We got like six out of ten thumbs down. Yeah. Um, we had some angry old man. What was it? Worthless. Worth Worthless yeah. was his comment. Thank you. Whatever he, your name was. Yeah, um, he, he was trying to throw tomatoes at us. Yep. Via YouTube comments. We got a guy, a horrible video. We're like, what's going on here? You're, <laughs> I think you're a very presentable guy. Will did the video. Um, yeah, I don't think my breast smells too bad. Very, very friendly human. But uh, anyway, so it made us think. Uh, on that video, we had... Um, basically have your phone and uh, Sonos unit on the same network. We had had to mute and unmute, and then we had power cycle the unit. And for our jobs, it fixes everything. But so we got to thinking, hmm, why do people hate the video? I know it's not because of Will, yeah. but so we had a moment, kind of, aha, the aha, aha, <laughs> where we go, okay, this is probably people that are setting up their own Sonos systems or they've had other companies do it. And so we said, well, what do we see in the field and how do we fix other people's Sonos systems that we didn't work on? Yeah, so, everyday real life Sonos issues that non-techie clients or people are gonna be going through, right? Yep, yep. So we'll have a couple basic things we're gonna go over. Uh, we'll have a couple advanced things and then we'll have the final, here's how you fix it if none of that stuff works aside from hitting it with a baseball bat. So first thing we had, no guest networks. And that's pretty straightforward. Sonos does not work on a guest network. So you got guest network, that's all bad. Get yeah. it out of there. Give it the boot. Um, can't also have networks with separate names, and especially if you've got a Wi-Fi extender. So, for example, let's say your network is named Sonos, your Wi-Fi network, and you've got one of these cheesy extenders from Netgear, D-Link, and the like, yeah. where it's called Sonos underscore EXT for your network. That will not work. So when you go from Sonos Wi-Fi land and you walk into Sonos underscore EXT land, your phone is changing networks, your Sonos is on another network, so that's not gonna work. Nope. So we get, and you gotta have a decent network that has the same name throughout. Um, we also see a lot of the times where people have a 2.4 gigahertz wireless network and a 5G network, yeah. and they've got their Sonos on the 2.4, but their phone is on five, and they're wondering, yeah. Why is it it's not, not working? It's not showing up on my S2 or S1 app. Yeah, that's going to mess with your the Sonos ecosystem. So, yep, yeah. that's that's kind of the same as it's just not the same network. So you got to make sure it's the same network. I know a lot of you right now might be going, I know this stuff. This is basic, but this is what we see out in the field. We just want to make sure that uh, we're bringing up everything that we see. Yeah, I'm trying, to, trying to try to help as many people as we can, yeah. and not have a sixty percent dislike yeah. for our uh, video again. We want to help you guys. We want yes, to get we do. more thumbs up and yep. positive comments with solutions that we're giving you. Absolutely. Um, Got to make sure that your Sonos app is updated and that your phone is updated. So Sonos now has, which is great, they have an auto updates. So if you set that, you never need to worry about it. You do need to make sure that your phone is updated. So if things aren't working. Your Sonos app is updated. Make sure your phone is updated. Oh, also the uh, the guy who hasn't uh, power cycled his phone in nine nine mm, months. Yeah, that power cycle your phone, please. That will make Sonos and a lot of other things work much better. Open apps too. If you had two hundred open apps oh, yeah, on your that phone and you forgot to close them all, yep, which happens for a whatever lot. reason, <laughs> yeah, and that might be <laughs> causing a bug or a glitch in your S one or S two app, right? Yep, yep. So. Those are kind of the basic things that we see. Um, now we can get to kind of the, the more advanced. So you may be familiar, there is an S1 app. Think of S1 as a legacy app for Sonos. S2 is a newer one. You can have times where the Sonos app will take you through this, where you're migrating S1 to S2, and your phone might say something like, now discovering device, hold on. And there can be times where, let's assume this is a phone right here. Your phone could be right here, your Sonos device is here and it's not seeing it. So I had this happen at my house. I literally had to take my phone, throw it on top of the Sonos device for it to finally discover it. Yeah. That took me 45 minutes to figure that out because it just wouldn't connect. That's not intuitive, but if you are going through that 
Discover device, you're going from S1 to S2, take your phone, flop it right on top of the Sonos device, that might get you going. Here's yeah. a big one we see on the advanced side. So these devices typically connect via DHCP. Uh, DHCP, as many of you may know, dynamic host configuration protocol. It's basically how your router, it's kind of a, you know, let it do its thing and not worry about it. Your router spits out IP addresses, devices pick them up, you don't have to think about it and it just works. The problem with DHCP is normally you have what's called a lease time, where about every, most routers are every eight hours or so, that IP address no longer works, your router spits out another IP, in a perfect world your Sonos device goes, oh, thank you, I will take that IP and then it'll work. We see pretty regularly where it doesn't work. So if you are a person who you've been going to your Sonos app and you're like, why are my devices not showing up again? You could have that DHCP problem. The fix to that is to, depending on your router, you're either gonna assign a static IP for those devices or a port reservation, depending on your Wi-Fi system. Um, you wanna show us, Will, how to do that with our Eero system? Yep. Pull your magic and bust out the Eero uh, port reservations here? Yep, let me show you how to do it. Let's go ahead and open up the Eero app. Now towards the very bottom right, let's select settings. And then we want network settings. It's right here in the middle. All right. And then we want reservations and port forwarding. And we want to add a reservation. I want to search for my Sonos garage unit. This is the one I want to lock up with the static IP. Go ahead and hit save. And this is going to lock up what used to be a DHCP into a static IP. You see it's been properly added. Now you're ready to go. Okay, so what we just did was we took our Sonos devices, we put them on a reserved IP. That way your router and the Sonos unit never really need to think. It's always going to the same address. Um, I had this problem with one at my house. I put it on the static IP. Haven't had a problem for a year and a half. Um, you know, talking about networks and decent networks, you know, in our good, better, best hierarchy, we use Eero for our good stuff. Um, we've got probably 800 or so Eros out in the field and they just work. So we are a big fan of using Eero with Sonos, but whatever type you use, uh, if you're having where your Sonos devices are dropping off the app, go in, set up a static IP or port reservation for those, and uh, you, should be, you should be in business. Yeah. So let's say if this stuff isn't working, all right? You've done all this, you did the steps from our original video. Uh, one of the things you can do with Sonos is you call up Sonos, 1-800-SONOS, whatever the number is. Yeah, sounds Use good. your Google machine, 1-800-SONOS, and then two additional numbers, whatever they are. Um, you're gonna get a human on the phone. They're gonna take you into some advanced settings, and in those advanced settings, there's a spot that'll say Submit Diagnostic. That gives you a number, you give that number to the Sonos person, and they then have kind of a map of your environment, so they can see where your Sonos is, they can see the network, they can see other devices. And we found that to be helpful before, where yeah. we've seen times where they go, oh yeah, the port on that switch it's wired to. I'm seeing a lot of noise. Can you change the port? Change the port, hey, now it works. And other things. So use that diagnostic if these other tips aren't working. Um, that doesn't work. Baseball bat? Back. Base, Back. I, I would at least. Actually, it's more elbow up and yeah. get the swing in. Rotate the wrist. I would at least double check, double, double, double check your network because that seems to be the underlying problem to where you think it's fine or it was fine sometimes or it's, oh, it's working now and then it's not all of a sudden. The network is the the villain, the true bad guy to Sonos, to your Sonos ecosystem, S1, S2, it doesn't matter. Bye-bye.